Hey everyone, the Network Work here. Hope you're doing well. This video is going to be freaking awesome and it deals with HA on a Mikrotik router. So by default, Mikrotik doesn't have HA, so this is actually quite a milestone just to show you what people can achieve through using stuff like custom scripts. So there's a person by the name of Nathan One on the community who started this project in 2016 already. He's been doing this for quite a while. So it's not a new thing. It's just, I feel like there's not enough exposure on it. And it's really something very useful. Just a quick disclaimer before I recommend or show you the video on how we're gonna set up HA. Um, you need to be careful with this. You can't just bring this in on your production environment. You're probably going to damage something. Reason being the HA scripts involve removing configuration, etc. because the Routers need to be the same model and they basically need to be a blank slate. So we're gonna get into the video again now. I just wanna remind people to like and share the video if you find any value in the content. And yeah, <laughs> see you in the video just now. Oof. What an intro that was. That was quite long. Sorry about it. I just needed to make sure that disclaimer was there. So we're going to set this up in Eve NG. I'm going to use some cloud hosted routers. But as I mentioned, you can do this on physical equipment, but it needs to be the same model of equipment. Don't go around buying a router board um, 2011 and trying to set this up with a cloud core router. You're, <laughs> you're going to have a bad time, please. So make sure firstly, you're running two sets of the same equipment before you do anything else. So I'm going to be using this on my Mikrotix on the cloud hosted routers and they are using version 6456, if I'm not mistaken, it might be 455. Um, that is irrelevant to me right now. So before any of that, before we actually do any of the configuration, I just want to, again, tell you about Nathan One. He's the author. I found this on the Mikrotix forums actually, because I was browsing around looking for HA and there's the forum. I see there, July 29th, 2016, holy, holy hell. So that's quite a while ago. And there I spot this gentleman, Nathan One, giving a link to a GitHub, and that's his GitHub for the HA Mikrotik research. So he's been doing this for quite a while, and I'm gonna just go on to this link. I'll post the link in the description as well. And this has all of the details. It's fairly straightforward. There's a readme, which is what you just see on here as well, telling you how to install it. There's even a guide how to do this step by step. And most importantly, there's this ha underscore init dot rsc. So that is the script that has all of the ha configuration in it. So just a little bit of information on how this works. So I might get it a little bit wrong, but essentially what happens is on your Mikrotik router, you'll be taking a port. Let's just jump back to the Mikrotix. So these Mikrotik routers, we're going to designate a port between them. And on this port, the port will be running VRRP between the two Mikrotiks, and it will essentially become what they call a heartbeat port or a heartbeat interface. So the what HA involves it is high availability and you generally get a master and a slave. And the master's job is just to tell the slave, okay, I'm the master, all the configuration is happening on me. And if for some reason I go down, then you take over. So it's very similar to just VRP. But the nice thing is all the configuration is replicated. So you don't need to get this VRP floating IP that you configure between the devices. Whatever you do on one Mikrotik, it will be on the other Mikrotik. So that is perfect for what we want to do because we want to have a very redundant setup. So HA accomplishes that. Um, what I do tend to see with this script is it's random, which Mikrotik it chooses to be the master, but that isn't really relevant. I think there is scripts to preempt which exactly Mikrotik is top, but I, I, I want to stress out your one logical device. It's it doesn't matter exactly which one is active at that point because you'll see when you log into Mikrotik, it will tell you. All right, so enough of that. What we're gonna do is we're going to be downloading this um, GitHub. We're gonna download this Mikrotik HA-Mikrotik. And I've already got this downloaded, but I'm just wanting to show you quickly. So we can download it, we can extract it, and it's now in my downloads folder. So first step, 
let's go to the installing there it says matching there it says the versions which is pretty good for it and then serial connections but i'm using eve but th that's just to make sure you can get onto the router so with Mikrotik, you'd obviously use uh, winbox to just access it through a mac address so first things first we want to reset both routers to factory default so i'm going to do this on my eve topology now i've got a Mikrotik one and i've got a Mikrotik two so i'm just going to run this command it's going to be copy paste for me really copy paste because i want to show you how easy this can be and how rewarding it is as well because i find this fascinating okay there we go yes and the routers will now reboot because they're busy doing the factory reset for us next step connect an ethernet cable between ether 8 and ether 8 so by default the script is set for ether 8 but you can move that to a different port you can make that ether 12 or a management port just something that is local to that Mikrotik or that the Mikrotik knows okay i just need to log out of these console windows again log back in there's a little bit of a bug on EvenG Pro um, with the Mikrotik interfaces using the HTML5 console. Okay, cool. So I am on both Mikrotiks again. They've been factory reset, so they don't have anything. So next thing the thing wants us to do is assign an IP address. So I'm just going to run my network adapter. So this could be your switch or it could be the actual internet or whatnot to my internet port, which is generally Ethernet 1. I'm going to do the same on the other router and I'm just going to in the meantime connect Mikrotik 1 and 2 as the guide said on Ether 8, Ether 8 but like I said you can change that you just need to understand if you change that you need to change the code as well or the script you need to edit that and there's not really much you're going to be doing you're going to see how easy this is in a sec so we've got the two Mikrotiks connected on Ether 8 so next step, we need to upload this ha underscore init dot rsc onto the Mikrotik. So let's check Mikrotik one out that I'm gonna make my primary. So I'm just gonna IP address print. I've got an IP address from DHCP on ether one. I might actually just assign an IP address. IP address add 192.168 address 192.168.246. 100 slash 24 and that will be on ether one and then ip route add destination 000 slash zero and that gateway will be 192.168.246.2 cool i'm just adding this configuration so long so that you can also see when that replicates across to router 2 Okay, so I've got an IP address, dot .100, so I should be able to win box onto this address. So let's try that. I'm just going to drag my win box window over. 192.168, I think I'm 246.100. Admin blank. And there we go. There's my Mikrotik, my cloud hosted router. If I go to my IP neighbors, I'll see on Ether8, there is the other Mikrotik. So next step for me is just to go to the files and upload this uh, download that I've got here. So I'm going to do that now. I might actually just check my downloads again because there was a bit of an update earlier today with um, with this. I just want to check. All right, we're back. And I just quickly went to my downloads again, or I downloaded the file again, because there's the ha underscore init or rsc. Because if you look at the GitHub, that was updated a couple of hours to ago, ago, and that was on the 9th of December. So just something to take note of is again, the author Nathan one is very busy with the project. So there we go. I've got my file. I've got it downloaded already. So I'm going to jump back onto my downloads directory. And there's my ha underscore init so i'm going to drag that into my winbox files open that there and there we go so i've got the script here now what do we do next <laughs> all right so i actually want to open up a putty session 
since I'm gonna putty in or SSH into the Microtic. Well, I'll just town it in, that should be fine. Where's my putty? Putty! Putty! Putty's being shy for some reason. Alright, so apparently Putty is hiding behind this Microtic window, so let's just go there. And let's turn it on to one. 921682461 Okay. So I'm going to go admin blank. Now I'm going to do two things. I'm firstly going to import the script. So let's go back to our GitHub to the instructions. So I've given it an IP address. I've uploaded the file and now we're going to import the script. So we're going to do this by running this forward slash import and then the file name script has been imported so the next step for us will be to go to github again and look at the next step so install ha so this is where we're actually going to be running the installation for the ha from the script we just imported and again there's a bit of copy here and you're going to have to change some of the values so i'm just going to bring this into a notepad plus plus ha install interface ether 8 so that's ether 8 that we chose if you made here you can make it like 12 or 1 or whatever you're choosing mac a i tend to make that the primary micritix mac address for ether 8 so let me just jump back onto my eve topology and then interface ethernet print so ether 8 has the MAC address of 5000000010007. Okay, so I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it in here for MAC A. And that could ver vary on your routers or your cloud hosted routers or your physical routers. That's why it's important to check. Okay, let me check Microtik 2 interface Ethernet print. That's my ether eight and quite similar. It's just zero two in the middle instead of zero one. There's Mac B and then password. This we can make whatever we want to. So I might just make it just since we're demonstrating one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but you can make that whatever you want. I'm going to copy this whole string now and I'm going to head back into my putty and I'm going to run it. Let's see what it's doing. It's saying, hey, I'm not the master. I'm running the HA startup first. And this is what was fixed a little bit earlier today because I was having issues importing this on the cloud hosted routers. And it's done. The HA has been started up. And <laughs> literally all that we need to do now is we need to copy this line, well, these lines into the other router, the Microtik 2. So I'm actually just going to go here and there you see this Microtik HAA standby. Then the host name even changed. How cool is that? Okay. So, and I hit enter it's active now because it was on initially. So it will be the master IP neighbor print. So I'm just going to to Mac telnet on two five zero 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 two zero 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 seven, which is the second Microtik. And now I'm just going to copy the string again, throw it in there. And yes. So the Microtik is going to restart now. This is what they say we, we've bootstrapped the Microtik. Let's go back to the instructions. So we've ran the install and we've copied across the string that we needed to on the secondary Microtik and it's busy rebooting now. So once it's booted up, it's bootstrapped. It's basically linked with the other Microtik. We're going to run this HA sync standby and <laughs> we're basically done. And this HA sync standby, you don't need to run it. You could wait and it would start replicating configuration across, but this just forces it. And then the secondary Microtik will restart again with all of the new configuration and it will be live. It will be in HA mode. So let's quickly see what's happening. 
Right, so Mikrotik 2 is doing its own thing. Let me get back onto Putty. Push that HA sync standby. Ooh, it's connecting. Ooh, <laughs> it's connecting. It's doing things. I like it when it's doing things. So it's busy just comparing configurations, copying across whatever's missing, and presto, we're we're done. So the secondary Mikrotik should be restarting again. IP neighbor print. I might just run a ping to that MAC address quickly. Because this is essentially what also happens is it'll run a ping to see if the neighbor is live and then... Okay, that's quite high latency. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so... <laughs> that should be it. That That's actually HA. We, we've configured it, we've set it up. I just quickly want to have a look and make sure everything's working. So stick around if you're more interested in seeing the HA actually. Um, so... Mikrotik 1 is active. Let me see if I can log into Mikrotik 2. So let's do a system, or let's do a tool Mac Telnet again. Let's get back on there. Admin blank. Ooh, there we go. H, A, B, standby. So this is router B, and it's currently in standby mode. Okay, I'm going to quit out of here. I'm back on the H, A. A, which is active, and that's Mikrotik 1. So Mikrotik 1 is active now, Mikrotik 2 is in standby mode. Um, what I want you to see is, remember, we didn't add any configuration onto Mikrotik 2, but we did add some on Mikrotik 1. So I'm just going to, let's, let's just look at the routes, for example, IP route print. So this added a few HA interfaces and such, but most importantly, there was this default route that I added that's on the active router. Now let's go on to the standby router and I'm going to IP route print and my route is there. It's active and it's live. If I do an IP interface or IP address print, you'll notice that the interfaces are actually in a disabled state. If I do a interface print, the actual interfaces also get disabled, so that is quite normal. Now I'm going to add some new config across. So let's go back into router one, and I'm just going to add an IP address. IP address add address. Let's make it something like one seven two sixteen. 1.1 slash 24 and let's assign that to ether2 okay so if i want to sync the configuration with the secondary unit we just run that ha sync command again and it will connect up to the secondary again and it will start comparing and it's going to copy across what's not there and then the, the secondary router will just restart again it's irrelevant because it's not being used no frames or packets are being forwarded to it. The only moment that things are, are going to be forwarded to it is in the event of a failure on the other equipment, which we'll simulate just now. I just want to show you that configuration is actually being pushed across. So, ooh, let's just try that again. Admin blank. So IP address print. I didn't configure this on the secondary router, 172.16.1, and presto, there it is on Ether2. So it's ready to rock and roll. So what I want to do now is perhaps run a ping from Mikrotik1. Actually, let's do this. Let's run a ping from my actual computer to 192.168.246.100. That is the Mikrotik's IP address. So they're in an HA cluster. So that's, I didn't configure this as VRP anywhere. This is the cluster's IP now. So I'm going to turn off Mikrotik 1, which is the primary. And my ping should drop for a bit. And let's see how long it takes for this thing to figure out. Okay, cool. I'm actually somewhere else. There we go. It's, <laughs> it's freaking cool, man. Um, it's somewhere else now. 
So 246.100, it's become, remember HAB? It's active now. That's why it's so cool. Because it also labels you to let you know exactly which router you're on. And it's running in HA mode now. It's syncing configuration and you're able to fail over with hardware. So this gives extra redundancy and you, you waste less interfaces, right? Because with VORP, you might run multiple LACP um, like trunks just to get more bandwidth across and then you need to run it between two routers and it, it gets to be a mess. But with this, <laughs> it's there. It's, it's one big router. It's one big topology. So this works really nice in an enterprise, in a carrier. It's really good and I can recommend it. Again, Nathan1, big props to you. This is all his script. Um, I'll send the link in his GitHub again. This guy is amazing. It's all because of him that we can do HA on Mikrotix, which don't do it by default. So I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you again in another video. See ya.